Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are going to launch a new kind of trans-Mars habitat and start testing it out. I already did a video on it and we tested some features like the ejection system uh, where the cabin portion, the top portion here, is a launch escape system and we tested that on Starship. This is obviously not a Starship launch. Uh, here it will be part of a large ship construction and we are launching it with the Orion carrier plane and the mini star. So unfortunately it's a cloudy day and the lighting isn't great but yeah I already sort of introduced the concept and its features in the previous video but just as a reminder it has three basic parts there is a airlock part up here a main habitat part where they're going to be living and doing stuff. And then the cockpit cabin part, which has some of the critical systems and also is a little bit more hardened in order to have radiation shielding in more serious events and is ejectable. So it will be a launch escape system in certain flight regimes. People were picky about that in that video. Uh, only certain flight regimes, okay? In this case, it's not launching crude, so we don't have parachutes, and I also dumped the propellant in it, though it came back. So, um, I actually don't want the propellant in it. Oh, it's still replenishing it. You know what, forget about it. There's too many clamps for me to turn off, and it's getting weirdly dark here. All right, SAS on, throttle up, all right, and that's too many things happening there. Off. All right, ignition. And launch. A little bit of rock of the tower. It's just pure shadow right now. This will be in a different orbit than the St. Louis and the Joplin. And that's probably a bad thing, but, you know... I wanted to launch in daylight, even though it turns out it's really, really dark because of the clouds. Oh, now we're getting some light here. Of course, this uh, really didn't fit very well on this. We have to tilt the mini star in order to fit it, otherwise it'd clip into the Orion carrier plane's body. It's 8.4 meters in diameter, so it's pretty big. About as big as we can fit on top of the Orion carrier plane without it looking a little bit too ridiculous. Inside the nose cone is a temporary set of solar arrays because this habitat doesn't come with any power generation of its own. It's gonna need to be attached to solar trusses. Uh, we needed some solar rays while it's waiting in orbit for those. So that's what we've got in the nose there. Okay, engines out and rolling. So obviously we are no longer focused on the Jupiter window. We'll deal with our existing missions and then aim for Mars. Now well, a little bit less than 4,000 meters per second as usual with the mini star so far. Okay, that'll be good enough. Or it'll have to be good enough. Okay, fairings. Uh, I thought we would get the fairings off first. Um, that's not the way I want them to jettison. Oh, great. Anyway. So yeah, it's just like this underneath the fairings, and then we've got the solar rays there. We'll extend them once we were in orbit. This does have RCS fuel of its own and RCS thrusters. When we dock it to the rest of the ship, the rest of the ship will be on the nose. So we'll remove this portion, this got a decoupler there, and then we'll dock stuff to the docking port underneath. And I decided to go with that, so uh, if we spin the ship for artificial gravity, they'll be standing on the wider surface down here, so that's nicer, I think. And also, when they look out of the cockpit, they'll be looking at the ship. I mean, on long journeys, there isn't a whole lot to look at, after all. And so it'll be nice to see the rest of the ship out the window like that. 
immediately after this we are going to launch the next thing and actually we'll be removing the solar array stuff pretty much immediately but I didn't want this to drain of all power while in orbit so far I've been using locations in the song route 66 for my ship names and but I, I'm skipping a few because I don't want ships named after like San Bernardino or stuff like that. I think the uh, there are really only four city names I'm gonna get from that song. We've got the St. Louis, we've got the Joplin. I think I'm gonna go with Flagstaff and the Barstow. Kingman's not too bad though. In a pinch, we'll go with Kingman. Oh, you know what? I've made a horrible mistake. This thing doesn't have a decoupler on top of it. It only decouples from this end. Ah. Uh, okay. I'll need an extra decoupler there. One interesting thing is that the crew access arm was designed for the Lynx, but it pretty much could work with this too. Um, we, we just need to shift the mini star down a bit. Maybe I'll just do that. Let's just... So in theory, they could board like that. This is a specially fitted platform just for the Orion carrier plane, by the way. It's used for nothing else. This time, I'm going to lock the RCS tanks here. Or the launch escape tanks. Okay, well, I've decided to just go with the nighttime launch this time. SAS on. Throttle is up. Ignition. And launch. At least the engine light lights up the tail fin and the insignia on it. Guess we've got that. Among the things we need to test with the habitat is its recycling systems, but we would need crew on there for that, so we'll have to wait for the moment. It has a water recycler and an oxygen generator. The oxygen generator is supposed to act exactly like the one on the ISS, which is basically a Sabatier process thing, where it takes the CO2, uh, takes water, just a little bit of water, and then converts it to O2 plus methane. And then in the, in the ISS, it just dumps the methane. I don't know if we're gonna do anything with the methane here. I doubt it. Okay, rolling. Okay, separation. And fairings? Well, no, it doesn't like to do fairings like that, okay. Some bearing. Doesn't like to do fairings in any normal way, really. Okay. Well, we didn't end up lining up with the Joplin particularly well, that was down to the timing, but this is supposed to be an independent ship anyway, so it's not too big a deal. Even though I kept the fuel out of the cabin, the escape fuel, we were a little bit tighter this time than last time, I think. Okay, 225 by 214, let's say, and well, let's get it into daylight first. Got two solar rays just like that. Okay, separation. And off goes the module. Its RCS needs to be on. Okay, its RCS is active. And we'll have to see about putting crew in it later on. And now for this. So the cabin part there is a normal IVA sort of cabin. And so we can transfer crew into it uh, the way no we normally would. It has capacity for four right now. I haven't added extra seats. Plenty of room for four Kerbals to go to Mars. It's, yeah, I think, I mean, <laughs> I think it'll be roomy and they won't go crazy, but yeah. Uh, the rest of it is passed through, so they can float around inside of it. Let's get this down, and I'll just put it on uh, re-entry trajectory. I'm not going to follow it down this time. 
Okay, that should be good enough, and then for the heck of it we'll make sure to get rid of the thing on the nose separately. The adapter. Okay, well anyway, it is re-entering. Let me make sure we rename the ship so that we know what it is. So, Flagstaff. All right, so next up we're going to launch the endurance module to it, which will give it some extra supplies, uh, especially food. Uh, the water and oxygen we're hoping to make, uh, make do with using the recyclers. If we didn't have the recycler systems, it might be a little bit tighter. But yeah, I think it'll be okay with the recyclers, but we do have to test that. If it turns out that it's not enough, then the endurance has spare room for water and oxygen so that we can load up on extra. Okay, so we're sending up the endurance module with some solar arrays like this. The endurance module is just an ISS module converted to carry supplies. It's, I think, the Destiny module or something like that. And it's not my model, it's NASA's model of the uh, module from the ISS. I forget which one I picked, uh, but I picked it because it was the right size. <laughs> so, and of course it's a pressurized module and can accommodate crew and accommodate lots of supplies. So yeah, uh, we're only, we're mainly carrying food. We're carrying a little bit of oxygen and water, but we're mainly carrying food there. And we have the solar rays and it has to have a little bit of engine power. I don't know if this is going to be enough. I really need RCS though. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, and for reasons I quite, can't quite understand, when it's one of these uh, RCS ports that you can switch the fuels on, it has to have some helium. Any tiny amount of helium will do. We also have a tiny little Canada tug on one side, and that will be used to pull off the other module that's currently on the station, the solar ray module that we temporarily placed on there. I do tend to use the term station and ship interchangeably with these things. It's got us at Kuru instead of at Tampico. How did it manage to do that? Did we launch out of Kuru on the previous launch as well, or did we launch out of Tampico? Um, I think we. I, I, I definitely recall launching out of Tampico, but. Kerbal Constructs needs to get its act together sometimes. Okay, we are wiggling a bit on the pad, and yes, because the previous launch was at night, this launch will be at night too, unless we want to wait a few months. So, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition, and launch. I really need to change the Canada tugs to just use MMH and Mon3 instead of MMH and NTO. The little bit of NTO you see there is because of the Canada tug. It used to be MMH and NTO was the go-to, but then everybody started using Mon3. Well, probably not started, but you know. Now it's all Mon3 all the time. On the bright side, as far as our rendezvous is concerned, the load is not as heavy this time for the mini star, so we should be able to do corrections a little bit better. Okay, rolling. A little bit better this time, but again, the payload is a little bit lighter too. If we had uh, filled up the water and oxygen, it wouldn't be. Okay, pretty close to 4,000 this time. Alright, separation. Okay, fairings. And... And on we go. Okay, but we need our target again. No, not the Joplin. Wrong ship. Oh, good times. Just 0 0.81 degrees. Wonder if I accidentally aimed at the Joplin initially. 
I mean, when it comes to supplies, the water is the main deal here. So, underfueling the water in the or undersupplying the water in the endurance module really makes it much lighter. But I still think it's more than 20 tons that we've got up there. It's not that light, but the capacity of the mini star is 42 tons. So, we've got a substantial amount of extra delta V now. So, let's see, RF boil off. Well, we do have MLI layers. It looks like I did put MLI layers on, but probably not a full 100 or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and correct inclination right away. It's two, two engines that combine for a thrust of one RL-10. Uh, frankly, probably the best thing to use would be like BE-7s since they exist. We don't need very powerful engines to be OMS engines here. Okay, that's a perfect inclination match. Now we just have to wait. Okay, I've brought us to a really low orbit because basically the target is also in a low orbit, but it was better to catch up. And I went as low as necessary to make sure that we could catch up with our electric charge without extending the really big solar panels. And so that's what we've done. So now we're trying to match orbits on one side here. Not very much relative velocity at all here. Really though, I think the payload should probably do the rest of it by now. Okay, that's probably good enough for the mini star's effort. Still plenty to spare in there. Uh, release. Electric charge is a little bit tight here. 400 meters per second. We certainly don't need that to do the rendezvous, but we do need our target as our target. Okay, but before we get there, we need the tug to pull off the module in the front. So, you just undock the tug. I wonder why it undocked sideways. Strange. It's like the fairing is also going off in a weird direction too. Spooky. We could use the claw or the docking port either way. I think I'll just go with the claw. Uh-oh, uh, this has 1,000 units of electric charge. This has plenty of electric charge. Uh, does the module have electric charge? It doesn't have electric charge anymore. The little tug took all the electric charge. Um, we can't even extend the solar panels. Uh, okay, change of plan. Tug, you need to grab onto this. We can't even set that as a target. Oh well, that we're still that. Okay. Tug, you need to set that. Uh, uh, well, you can just grab onto this and as a target. We'll just extend the solar panels. Don't want all the food to rot or anything. Okay, we've grabbed on. Tried to make sure the solar panels wouldn't actually hit the engines, but I think I might have cut that too close there. Okay, all right, now it's recharging. Let me just go ahead with the tug's own job here. Lots of moving parts here. I don't know if there's any point to keeping the mini star on hand. I don't think so. We'll just set the orbiting, even though this is not the right location to set the orbiting. Okay, that'll do the trick. So certainly not a light habitat area for four Kerbals. 41 tons here, and then we're adding another pressurized module. Yeah, and this thing doesn't seem to have an independent controller. I, I guess I missed that part. Well, good thing we have the tug, I suppose, but that means we really have to have the tug around. I thought the Endurance had a control unit, but I guess it doesn't. Okay, we've got it, and decouple. All right, that is off, clearing that docking port. Now, can we deorbit this 
unit and go back and grab the the main module. Let's see. Well, uh, with everything heading into darkness, I really don't want to leave the wayward module behind here. So we'll just make sure the periapsis is sufficiently within the atmosphere. And then we are going to let go of this. Okay, and then we're going to head back to that module there. Plenty, plenty of fuel, that wasn't a very heavy thing those solar arrays. Okay, we have docked, so now this actually has control. Very important. And we want to control from here. And we should shut these engines down. We never we never really got to use them. Probably didn't need them with what the mini star could do. So this is 23 tons. So with the other side altogether 64 tons of Habitat for four herbals for crew. I mean, obviously, everything was meant to be sized for humans, but certainly not small. A bit luxurious. We're going to need possibly more fuel modules than with the other ships. Other things I need to create are the lander for Mars. I really am not satisfied with what I've got in that department. But we had the mini queue. The mini queue is sort of good. But I don't think we need need the cargo hold, really. Basically, with the mini queue, we had a huge cargo hold that is stuffed with ISRU units, but it was still too big for all that. And for once, I'd like to design a lander that doesn't require me to strip off half the parts in order to get it back into orbit again. As often happens with the procedural tank landers that I've made before. I always end up Mark Watneying the whole deal. Sometimes it's mild, just like taking off the parachutes that we used for landing. Sometimes it's more extreme, like having to remove docking port and having them EVA to their vessel in orbit. Okay, we good here? Okay, we are good here. Alright, it is all together now. 63 tons. And let's get it in daylight. So, the rest of the ship is actually going to be here, and then the propulsion over here. Again, so that they can look out at it. There is a hatch here that they can board with, but I didn't put a docking port there. Um, probably should have. <laughs> So, so far so good. This is uh, obviously a different looking ship than the previous ones. For now, this is the Flagstaff. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.